Heading right into it. Players leaving the battle bus, heading to their POIs. And for some of these players, heading to their last dance in this session. We've seen so many Osborne battles between many different top level teams. We've even seen for some of these teams, the last time they will ever play with each other potentially. But who will step up in this final game? Who will get the step down off of spawn is the big question. Command Cavern on your screen. Homes three of the teams inside the top five. Looking to see what they can do next. Aqua and Vino dropping straight inside. We haven't seen this POV right off the rip just yet because it hasn't mattered too much before in terms of what exactly happens off spawn. But this game, we have to stay in tune with the Cavern. Maybe I missed it, but I don't think I saw Gunner on their side. So this might be a game where they don't have the vault and its fruitful launch pads. And so maybe that is the one contingency for the rest of the teams who need them to stumble. Malabuka Mustache though, leading the way in eliminations in the finals, characteristically. We know that is one of their biggest strengths and selling points. But can they stay up and have that big pop-off game? See the difference between them and their teammates, or enemies, I should say, inside the cavern. I'm getting flustered myself. Third and 21st place, right? Thinking of Nas having a little bit of a rough time. Meanwhile, sixth for joins the Andy Synapse Station. This time, you can see the desperation for some of the teams way far away in the standings, trying to get all the way towards the top. Reason the Sipto's immediately moving in. Top six up for grabs or just threatened for the moment. Thomas is Gian Tripper in fifth place right now in the cavern, so far away from everyone else. We're gonna see so much posturing between all these teams. They did have the vault. Gunner spawned on their side. And so they will hold the keys when it comes to the launch pads. We're stashed well, down, Malabuka gone. No. 292 points is where they are deleted by Anas and Pink. For it to all come tumbling down like that. They had such an impressive run leading up to this moment, this game. But Pink and Anas put it to an end. And that one's personal for Pink and Anas. They've suffered in this session as a result of the dominance of Manabuka and Mustache. And so to take them out, to end their run in the FNCS, end their dreams and hopes of maybe doing the spectacular and coming back, no hope. But Malabuka and Mustache have really impressed. They've been a joy to watch. They provided for so much entertainment. And wherever they do finish now, congratulations to them, props to them. But now we will watch as Uguay and Taysen, Vino and Aqua battle it out for first place. 310 points for Taysen and Uguay. Looking at the hill they have to really climb. It's a 29 point, almost 30 point differential. Looking at what they have in terms of the way they've been moving around the map. Recent many have been up here many times to talk about the utility they use. It's just chain mobility. There's geysers, there's cannons. That's the natural mobility in the map right now. They keep chaining it. It's the reason they can get to any zone. It's the reason they can call any place home in a matter of seconds. No applications required. They're there. They're building up. And meanwhile, Cami and Seti, for them, it's been a little bit rocky. A team that has to be maximum in inconsistency. Has to be there every single game. They miss out a few. They tumble down in the ranks. So right now, 284 points used to be in the equation for top three. They're just looking outside in. Going to need a huge swing if they want to win this FNCS. We're already seeing the beef taking place at Tilted Towers. Bad Sniper, Dick AS, Benji, Fishy, and Savage. 38th and 39th place. This is for everything, right? This is for their own egos, their fan bases. We like to battle it out on socials. Who will be victorious between this two? Last season, it was Bad Sniper and DKS by a long mile. This season, though, it's an opportunity for Benji and Savage to get the one up. This season, they're on the same street. 
they're right each other or right beside each other in the same houses. Savage and Benji looking for a single shot, and you can tell that it's personal in this fight. Usually, there's a huge rotation. This time, they're looking for the shots. DKS scratched up a little bit. Look at just the fury, the focus from Savage, the oh. tracking, the beams, DKS down in the feed. The combat SMG, an absolute laser in that moment. The jump shotgun as well is relentless. Bad sniper now. With just five builds, you can see what it means to Benji and Savage after getting 2v1 last game by Malabuka. This one means everything. This is their chance to have at least one saving grace in these finals. That sniper won't make it easy for them. But for how long can he run? He's trying to hide for the moment. It's going to be found out multiple times. Peace control drop down from Savage as Benji follows in the fray, looking for any single shot. As soon as he has a second landed tag, it's ring around the Rosie on all sides. How long can Bat Sniper keep this up? The third party, Savage, he's seeing red. He doesn't even care. Hit in the back multiple times. On the side, he finally defends, but still, he's in the business to look at Bad Sniper. Everyone, the community looks like it's helping him out. Bad Sniper, man. How has he managed to just get away? I'm sure Benji and Savage are fuming. He just won't give them the inch, the space. And so now, having to result to just getting the HP back up, but they have overtaken, right? Well, they are sitting in 36, sorry. So they're moving up slowly but gradually in the leaderboard. We'll see where they end at this game. That's not the win for them. For them in this FNCS, Bat Sniper needs to go down. That, that is what they want in this game. Kweezy and Hen will be wanting everyone above them to go down. They've had a phenomenal comeback. They started the day way down below. They were in the 40s. Shy wager at one point. 40s. They were in the 40s at one point. I think they were 41st coming into today. Eighth now. Eighth. Craziness, bro. Absolute madness. But as much as it's not been an easy season for them, this is why you can't count them out. They are an FNCS winning duo, and they are of that level still. And finally finding their rhythm. We'll see how far they can take that into this last game. But when it comes to Rhythm, Mino and Aqua will be looking to re-hit theirs. So consistent on the day. The most placement of anybody else. More victory royales than anybody else. They just look so good. Sometimes they don't make it off spawn. Sometimes it's an issue rolling in. But they see that top 10 level. It's a win. It's a second place. It's a third. I think their worst time in the top 10 has been in eighth place. And that's when they just started overall. Uh, on the day yesterday. That was their first game. After that, sky high. And they've just been villains for this whole lobby that no one's taken down. Yeah, they've made it look like such easy work, right? We talked yesterday about how coming into the FNCS, they were considered by most people the de facto favorites. And they have not let down at all. Provided for the entertainment, showing us why they are such a strong height team and showed us why Come On Kevin is considered such a strong POI. Yeah, absolutely. One of the teams that's not landing there, though, just towards their own side, carving their own path, I think, every single season and dubbing it with their names. Cami, Seti, fourth place right now. We talked about their consistency overall. Unfortunately, going down in one game, absolute issue for them in total. We'll have a similar zone that we've seen before inside the European FNCS on day one. Usually this one pulls up towards Sleepy. We'll see if that's a possibility, giving Hen and Queasy even more of an advantage. But you talk about Cavern teams, one with high expectations that have landed the mark a little bit. Thomas and Trippin on screen right now. I think with Thomas and Trippin, where they sit right now is exactly where most people expected them to. I think if we were to be able to find a way to uh, look at all the prediction lists made <laughs> across the past week, I think more often than not, their average placement on those prediction lists would be fifth. <laughs> yeah. So to see them in fifth is just where they probably have been expected to perform. I'm sure they would have had high expectations for themselves. But nevertheless, neither an overperformance nor an underperformance from them. But we'll see. Maybe they can push their way up a tiny bit more. A bit of extra dosh is never something to laugh about. $300,000, by the way, for first place. 
here today. And that's exactly what everyone's trying to strive for, that Axe of Champions 2.0 also up for grabs, as Anas grabs another elimination as well. So $1.3 million prize pool in total that's split amongst these teams in EU. On the top of our screens, you see Tace in there with Uguay, the Falcon boys. What does this mean for Tayson, right? If he was to come back somehow and find a way to win another FNCS title, how would, how would that be for him? Might just be the greatest of all time. And this time it's not a joke. He has been in that conversation. It's been across regions, across seas as well. Tayson versus Buga. That's what everyone, the comparison is, right? Look at his earnings in general, Levin. What, what is he on right now without any early, early Fortnite types of earnings? Just the FNCS so far, right? Where does he stack? If, if Taysom was to win this FNCS, that would bring him to $950,000 earned without any World Cup earnings. Usually when you hear a number that big with a Fortnite player, you can expect them to have made something big in the World Cup days. He had none of that. This is just from FNCS, Cash Cup, just hard work and grit. And so it's his new age legacy up against some of those Titans that played inside the World Cup. Up against one just dominant player that's won multiple FNCSs before, which is Buga across the season in the East. This is a huge, huge game for him. One of the potential games of his life, maybe, he needs I, to pull off. You talk about expectations people have, we think Taysom doesn't do well when he doesn't win an FNCS. Just think about that. If he doesn't get first in the hardest region to play, arguably, it is, it, it's, it's wraps for him. We'll see what he can do. Thomas hitting some big shots for Surge there. I feel like a broken record talking about his ability <laughs> to do damage when it comes to getting Surge. I mean, no surprise from Thomas. Biggest surprise, I feel like, on the days on our screens. Joe and Ziandi. I mean, talk about their story just specifically in this FNCS. Qualifier one, game number six. They start things off not inside the top six at all. Not inside a position to play the FNCS. Final game, big clutch from Joe and Ziandi. They're allowed to play, and now they're sixth place coming into the last game of this FNCS. And not only are they sixth place, they have made it look so, so good. They've just been such a force, such a threat. The Dark Horse team out of sign-up station making a POI that maybe sometimes gets meme. Looks like a very, very strong one. Seti and Camilo, they need to stay in this game. They can't afford to go down now. Fourth place is impressive. Would it be able to hold with Thomas and Tripp and Chasen? I'm not sure. They need to stay in it. 177 above, but so much pressure being applied. The map's dwindling. Cami down to just wood. Hellfire. And Scram, though, they're angry. They see red. They see holes who are looking weak. And sitting in ninth place, they want to secure a top 10. Got to topple over the building. Cami also still going for tags, 215 above, but they for sure want more. Thing is, you see a team that's running this far away, Hellfire Scram, they have to know it's one of those teams inside the top five. Zandy Joe right beside them as well. Sixth, ninth, and fourth, side by side in the same box as 10th watches from far away. Whatever happens here will change the scope for the rest of this game. So much on the line for these teams. All their interactions are so meaningful for the standings. The top players, the ones that have really just shined their way through this FNCS. This is their chance now to cement themselves in the history of this season. Hellfire and Scram struggling with Surge though. And it's not something that I've had to say too little. We've seen this in previous games. We saw how aggressively they tried to get onto Kami and City to deal with it, but they didn't allow them. And now Kami and City might realize the pain these guys are in and see that as an opportunity for them. Scram just being targeted by the rest of the lobby as well. Seti and Kami, their turtle defense, the thick shell that's so hard to crack. It's allowing every oh, single other beast yeah, in the animal yeah. kingdom to join this fight and hop down. But no, no it's the Andy. Leap to a place where they are not welcome. This is not your kingdom. And they've been taken out. They got a bit too overzealous there. 
They tried to capitalize on Hellfire and Scrum, and that they did. But then taken out by the team spraying, and Kami and City were able to sweep through as well. And for them, they used so much to run away from Hellfire Scram. So many mats. I was about to say, it doesn't matter what happens here. They're not going to be well off at all. But now two teams worth of loot fall at the doorstep of Seti and Kami. Taysen takes out Kinzel as well. Been a huge force in the end game to interrupt the layers that this specific duo, both these duos on screen, like to play. So with that pressure gone, what can this second place team do to make up that 30 point differential? Yeah, you can see Taysen and Chapix rotating their way on in late. And you can already see the effects of that. The team's in the zone, looking at them, making it difficult for them to rotate their way in. They do get their way into the zone, which is a good thing. They will survive for now. But very much a dicey situation to be in for these guys. A replay from Chapix. What did he manage? Oh yeah, my. He, he is, he's on one. He's on one. That's it. That's not allowed. That's it right there. That's Kinzel. not allowed. Kinzel caught sleep. But Chapix, uh, in fact, he wasn't even caught sleep. Chapix put him to sleep. <laughs> Ugwe hitting mad shots right now. So the Kami have a little bit of ways to go. We've been talking about narrative and storyline. Let's look at the gameplay now. Every single team's been set up in different boxes so far. The zone's been around them. It hasn't been a problem yet for a lot of these guys, but now they'll have to start to move. Taysen Ugwe, same situation. Might have taken out Kinzel. Nebs, angry about things so far. Gonna be tough for them overall. They know he's a solo above. And so if he starts to get too much of a problem, they can deal with him. They hear him. They know he's right there on their same layer as well. But they need to make sure that they don't make too much noise. There are players, again, who are in the zone, who can look towards them. And so you see the change, oh. the point of attack. They tried to go from a different angle. They wanted to put Nebs in between the teams in zone and them. But there was another team ready and waiting, looking. So they'll give that one up and they'll make their way into the zone. And there's a pathway for that, but it's Hen in front of them as well. Hen and Queasy. All these guys have such a storied past. Taysen, Ugwe, Hen, all very familiar with each other. Queasy as well, you could say the same. Ex-teammates colliding in these final moments of the FNCS. The collisions that Taysen and Ugwe have been taking so far have given them up towards 1,000 damage above Surge. They can just chill for the rest of this game. Second place as well. Just think about how to win the FNCS. Think about how to stop Vino and Aqua. For Seti, Kami, playing defense this long, not having a voice, the mime equation for them has been the whole game. Silent, they're just 30 above. Meanwhile, Aqua, Vino, looking at them, 400. They're, they're fine. Strong. They're looking so strong. We're the zone pull in five seconds. That'll dictate if they're still the maestros of this game or just part of the pack in the orchestra. Aqua now taking tons of damage, but it's fine. They will have to move. It's not going to be a max one, but we'll have lots of people by their side. The team is bullying them. One of the players just went down. If Aqua could hear that, they might even go for that box fight. It might be risky. Chulex, Chicho, they're going to have their FNCS run stopped here, but what a nice one it's been. Yeah, definitely came into this FNCS with not as high expectations as maybe they would have wanted, but nevertheless, they were able to put themselves in contention at times. Top 10 performance is not bad whatsoever. Even with some of the trials and tribulations they faced this season. For Seti Kami, those trials, they continue. I mean, you play defense for so long, you, you survive, you're not able to live. And that's the issue right now. They haven't had an effect, an impact, even a scratch on this entire server. And now they'll sacrifice their position to look for those tags. They'll be late in moving. Kami now taken down inside the storm. He is gone. Fourth place so far. Seti cannot make the pad. And their story for this FNCS ends outside the top three. Another example of a team just stumbling short. And so now Thomas and Trippin will have a chance to move up in the standings. Aqua and Vino with pre-edit plays. They are on one, but hold on a minute. They can't afford to go down. Aqua needing to take a step back. You can see they're clearly confident right now, but they can't allow that confidence to turn into arrogance. They need to stay humble. They need to just hold on. The longer they hold on, the more likely it is that they will 
leave today the FNCS champions. He's got a few forage fruits in his inventory. An apple a day might keep tasting an Ugwe away. That's what he's hoping for at the moment. He's chomped on all three. Yeah, and they are looking very, very healthy, as stated before. And that is totally bad news for Tayson and Ugwe. They ideally needed them to already have been down. Yeah. They, uh, you know, in the ideal world, for them to win FNCS, they needed Aqua and Vino to go down off spawn or in the mid game. So now the pressure is not only on them to try win the game, but to do so in scintillating fashion. They need to do so many eliminations. They need to just go for a Malabuka Mustache <laughs> type end game right now. What they need is 10 Elims more specifically than Aqua and Vino, and then stay ahead of them as well in the placement. So far, Aqua and Vino have just hit second or third place if they're not winning games inside the end games on day two. Tayson, Ugwe already affected, looking to see what to do next. This is not a situation we've seen them in before. They never really leave this super late. They're not really playing for information either as Tayson has to shield up. This should be trouble for the duo. Can they identify the pad? Yes, they can. This time, it's fine, and they're in the skies. They won't be timed out, and they'll be able to pick a position in the zone. But like we established, it's not just about staying up for them. If they really want to leave today as FNC as champions, they have to start doing damage. They have to start getting eliminations. The Elims have to start now. Look at the point differential. 322 on the top right, 352 on the bottom right. It's basically 30 points in total. Such a mountain to climb. Such a barrier to have to break through. Aqua and Vino, though, not playing for height as we've seen them do so well in previous games. It's actually Flois and Mappy that hold that ground. And so... Eventually, these guys may even collide on the mid and low layers. The armored wall comes through to delay, give them that space to move forward in the zone. Vino, the responsibility of the Tarpa right now, but a Tarpa with no mats is truly nothing. They need to fight. Vino has to hit the shots when they matter most. It's Zhu, who's going to be the first person at the jaw of this dynamic duo. But Aqua's down. Vino has no mats. Aqua basically had the rest of them all. There's nothing for him to do but just pray and spray. But he can't find a single shot. And low ground is elevating up. Vino is forced towards the sky. 120! What? Driving by! Kefi's down. And he's got a few more mats to work with. But the battle's not over yet for the first place team. They're still moving and taken down with about 359 points. But Tay since gone too, the upper echelon falls. That's it for the top of EU. We saw Vino against Tayson last year to try and win an FNCS. This time it seems like he might have got the best of them. But down below in the standings, Thomas and Trippin have finally taken fourth place and they're trying to take names on the way as well. They want the victory out to close it out. They're sitting in third now. Malabuka and Mustache pushed down. But can they get the victory out from up above? Mappy, Flois, they want to close things out on a high. They want to move up and get some more dosh. But Vico wants to put an end to the Danes run. Take Shippen out. And now Thomas in a solo clutch situation. What can he do? Up near the bugle. Volcanic Rock on all sides, but he gets cooled down. Mappy up top on high ground. Every elimination, thousands of dollars of cash just flowing in different banks. Mappy and Flois up top do not want to give it up, but it is chopped out. Jackson's there to be able to hit that crucial build and more damage flies from the other side. Has a pad, but it can't really be used for now. No mats on the bottom side. Jackson looking for the next shot and the spray's there. Mappy just chomps on his head. Everything falls from the sky. Flois and Mappy win that final game. Flois and Mappy, when it mattered in the final game to push their way up in the standings, to fight for more earnings. They have done it, a victory royale. They play in height like experienced veterans, not giving anybody a chance to take it and fighting down below valiantly to close out the FNCS in game 12. What a win.